And it says we are live. It's Thursday night. I'm here. Your beautiful that must mean, baby. It's time for Got Back Goes Live. I, of course, am your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton. Hey, Got Back. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe. And while you are at it, light them up, baby. Hit the notification bell. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that's in the description down below. Also in the description down below. And if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we have to offer to you through spring or course. Hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. Uh, I'm just getting a couple of things set up here. Let's hope we do not encounter the technical difficulties that we had last week because that was a nuisance. Uh, for those of you that may have missed it, last week uh, my my everything sort of crashed on me and I um, I ended up having to um, there. I ended up having to uh, go back in like end, end I, I guess one um stream and sort of finish another it was it was a bit of a nuisance but we made it we we survived right we survived we always survive don't we as i go down here uh, okay hey blue uh hey boss gunny hey francis uh hey marcus caldeo uh hey darren hey joel uh, 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 uh. hey lance so <clears throat> First things first, I want to give a huge shout out to Ninja Bill. For those of you who do not know, um, he recently ran into some bad luck. Uh, his storage unit, where a lot of his collection was, uh, got broken into, one of three, and uh, he was robbed. Um, I mean, it's nothing it's nothing else to say about it. Well, I, I mean, luckily, this community tends to come into the woodwork to help people, um, you know, when they, when they have suffered uh, in some way, shape, or form. And... Uh, you know, hopefully the police will be able to do something. Hopefully he'll get at least some of his collection back. Hopefully, you know, uh, people in the community will over time try and help rebuild some of that. But we um, we all know how we would feel. Um, so, you know, our, 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 our thoughts and our sympathy, certainly with Ninja Bill, um, a legend that really a lot of us know, hey, right? Um, also, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point this out. I, sometimes I don't understand people's motivations with stuff. Like when people thumbs down something, like why? Why? That's just a miserable thing to do. Not just to me, but to anybody. If you if you're not gonna if you don't like a certain video or it doesn't land with you or something for me or anybody, cool. You can always just like go away, and not watch it. I don't know what the point is of having to do something like a thumbs down or leave some sort of a rude comment. And I've you know, or my favorite. When somebody tries to tell you what you should be doing to do it right. So, Papa, uh, was it Papa Tubes? I think is his name or Papa Yubes, something like that. Kept talking to me. And I got to the point where I was like, dude, like, I'm not the guy for you. You should just go away because I'm not the guy for you. And he kept saying like, oh, you had, by the way, this was about, uh, this was a conversation that happened on the countdown of the top 10 worst third party companies. And he said, you had five minutes at the beginning of babbling nonsense. I'm like, no, it's called an introduction. And that's also where we give the caveats of the voting. It's also where we do the honorable mentions. So no, it's not babbling nonsense. It just didn't land with you. And then he said, with each one, you didn't show pictures of all of the complaints that people had. I'm like, it's because it's not about individual releases. It's about why people avoid an entire company. Hence why I use the logos. And then he said, why is your face on the screen? I'm like, it's been proven like by people that are a lot more in the know about this stuff than me, that having a face on screen has people connect better and is a better way to go. I don't know if it's true or not. And the dude, the dude still kept going. And he was like, well, you know, that, you know, he said his name, but I'm going to say that piece of garbage who's a thief that we all know whose name I don't say. And I delete people who do say it. He said, you know, I've never seen his face. I'm like, dude, the, your go-to is a guy who built his channel on theft, who is absolutely worthless as a human being. And you think I want to emulate that? I got news for you. I don't want to emulate a thief. I, if he's watching, I want him to hear this. I don't want to emulate a thief. 
And then he mentioned PewDiePie. I've never in my life watched one video from that guy because I have zero interest in it. No, I don't want to be a PewDiePie. I don't want to be a Logan Paul. I don't want to be a thief. I want to be the first me. And I want to do it with integrity and honesty, even if that's brutal honesty. And you guys that are here week in, week out know that we don't always agree and we don't have to agree. But at least what I tell you, you can take to the bank. So for anybody who thinks that they should go and tell somebody how to do this, maybe you should keep your mouth shut because nobody really wants to hear your asinine, idiotic, ill-conceived comments. Me or any other YouTuber, if you don't like it, just go the hell away because we don't want you here. It's really as simple as that. And I find more and more, I got to like call people out on this nonsense. I don't think anybody here has ever done it. But like spread the word. If you know somebody that does that, spread the word. I see it a lot of times with the trans, um, wrestling fans too. Like they're so tribal. Either, you know, I love WWE. AEW is garbage. I love AEW. WWE is garbage. Why can't you just enjoy the thing that you enjoy and be happy that there's plenty of it around? Same thing with Transformers. I, we all know, I don't like IDW. I don't like Unicorn Trilogy. I don't like it. And people keep bringing it up to me. And I don't know why. Don't bring it up to me. I don't like it. But I've also been the exact same guy who has been saying it's high time for those eras to now get their updates, for those fans to get their updates. It doesn't need to be for me. I don't need to like it. I don't care. But if you do, then I think it's time for your era to come. And I'm happy for you if you are happy with the releases that have come so far. So you should be. So just a couple of things I wanted to kind of get off my chest before we get into the news and whatnot tonight. And there's a bunch of it. Speaking of Cybertron, um, Starscream. Why don't we just mention a couple of things now? So Mark done one of his behind the scenes and um, he referenced the, oh, he was doing behind the scenes for Cybertron Starscream, which by the way, I get that it's hyper articulated. He looks excellent in all of his modes and stuff. It's not a Starscream for me, but I, I understand. I've seen him in person. He is actually here in my neck of the woods. And he seems to have a, like a lot of sculpted detail and a ton of paint. So if that's your era and that's your Starscream, he's brilliant. He really does look brilliant. And I've heard that the articulation is as good or better than Siege, which everybody knows what I think of that Siege mold. I think it's the best Seeker mold they ever did. So if this is in line with that, it has to be fantastic. They did mention, or I did mention near the end that we are in the uh, golden age of Transformers. Now, I don't know where he got this from. I have not heard anybody call this the golden age. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Which led me deliberately to this week's countdown question, which will be the top 10 Transformers lines. That'll be very telling as to what the true blue golden age is. Was it Combiner Wars? Was it G1? Was it Beast Wars? Is it right now? Was it Titan's Return? Was it, you know, um, Siege? Was it Earthrise? Is it Earthspark? What really is the golden era? We're going to find out just how correct Mark Marr really is. Speaking of Mark Marr and... Uh, designers and developers and stuff of Transformers. We also found out this week that John Warden is coming back and he will be the, hold on, let me find what his title will be because, you know, they can't just keep it simple. Hold on, because I had it written down and I want to make sure that I find it and say his new title right. He's going to be the Director of Product Design. I don't know if guys like Evan, BMAC, and uh, uh, Mark are going to be leaving the brand and getting moved around or if Warden is going to be like their boss over them or what. Um, but he's coming back for both Transformers and G.I. Joe. So he'll be overseeing both of those, which honestly, some people might say, well, both brands, that's a lot on the plate. But let's not forget that Hasbro in 2023 already laid off 3,300 employees. Surely there's going to be people whose plates are going to get heftier and busier. For sure. Uh, let's see who else has come in here. Uh, hey, Blue Star. Um, yeah, I, I would imagine it would be absolutely horrible. Yes. Um, yeah, it very much sucks. Um, uh, we made it back to 1985. Uh, Chicken Alfredo, I had Donald's Pizza. Um, I don't, my wife had. I don't remember what she had tonight, but I, I had, I always call it cannoli, even though it's not cannoli. I, cannioli, beef cannioli, cannoli. Col cologne. I don't know how to say it. It's deliciousness. 
I'm going to call it cannoli, even though I know that's 100% wrong. Um, can we get a partial list of what was stolen? I mean, I don't have any list of it. You'd have to ask Ninja Bill. And I don't know if it was just Transformers. I don't know if it was Transformers and Gundam. I, I don't I don't know. Um, but I, I I heard about it. And then I heard that it happened like 3 a.m. in the morning. And apparently, like, the guys that done it have been going all over his state and, like, hitting different places. And apparently, like, they're related because they wear the same clothes. It's It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing, and unfortunately, Ninja Bill got snarled in it. Uh, hey, Dragonfly. Uh, hey, Ultra Megatronus, if I didn't say it, by the way, buddy. Uh, nah, Waspinator, you're not late at all. Folks nowadays seem to feel the need to make their opinions heard whether anyone else wants to hear them or not. Yes, yes. And even if you're going to make your opinion heard, why would you suggest to someone, well, you should do this because so-and-so does this. Why would you suggest someone to be a copycat? How is that original? How is that unique? How is that you and your voice? I don't think that that person at all has a grasp or an understanding of what I'm trying to accomplish, at least on YouTube. But, you know, to each their own, I guess. Um, here in the USA, we don't have dislike counters. Uh, makes it hard to see a good, bad feedback. I mean... You, I mean, you do, well, I guess, with the up and down, thumbs up, thumbs down, because you get a percentage, right? But I find most of the people that will thumb something down are the same ones who will uh, leave some sort of a comment that, you know, they're butthurt about something. It's not that they didn't really like it. Sometimes it is. But a lot of times it's that they're butthurt, hurt, especially like on the countdowns, because it's like, that's not the way my list would have been, so I don't like it. People are so childish and sooky. It's amazing. Um, I call it entitled, right? Hey, Ed. Just like that, I block people from commenting on my channel. No, I don't block them. Let the babies have their bottle. I'll just make fun of them and point them out here, right? You never know. Someone like that might come to your channel and do the same sort of nonsense. You must not be named. Yeah, we all know who it is. A very quick question. Uh, what version of Orion Pax origin story do you prefer? The G1 or Aligned? Uh... Funny you mentioned that. I, I I prefer the look of G1 because that's what I have and that's what I grew up with. But I like the story elements of Aligned, right? I When I do my kind of headcanon and continuity, I really tend to have, you know, Megatron be the gladiator. Orion was the live uh, mathematician and stuff, right? Uh, rather than a dock worker. So I, I tend to, I tend to prefer the Aligned. Plus, of course, original 13 and all right um you should be you exactly and not just me everybody should like Keldeo just said it there and he and i and Keldeo, you know this as well as i do you and i do not always agree at all but you know what we keep coming back and i certainly wouldn't say anything that i thought was doing you any sort of like long-term lifelong harm or you know um um making you feel like what you're doing is bad or something like I, that's never, ever my aim. My aim, even if I'm brutally honest, is to just be that brutally honest. And hopefully you just take it as that. It's certainly never personal. Right. Um, but like some people just don't get that. Uh, and if I skip guy, uh, stuff, guys, I apologize. Hey, Ash, I was robbed, uh, before, uh, my tools were stolen from my garage when I was in college. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's happened. Um, not, when I married Starscream wife, but I was married years and years ago before her. And at that wedding, you want to talk about an auger of bad things to come and probably a sign that, you know, uh, maybe this marriage was kind of doomed from the beginning. We got married. We walked down the aisle and got to the end of the aisle only for the maid of honor to say, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you guys were just robbed because my well ex-wife now she had a bag in the car on the church parking lot of near right up by the doors by the way of the bridesmaid and the car had been broken into and her bag was stolen which also had her wallet in it and her credit cards and money and all of that it was a whole thing and i was like man whoever did that on a church parking lot during a wedding to a bride there's gonna be a special place down below downstairs for that guy it's gonna be real hot i suspect i uh, got motormaster wild rider and bludgeon i mean Three great molds, well, two great molds. Wild Rider, I'm not a fan of it, but if you are, cool. Um, Bludgeon is a great mold. Motormaster, great mold. Uh, hey, Ken. Hey, Lee. 
I give you the straight goods, only you get, right? Very honest. The way I look at it is like this. When I do, say, a review, I look at it as, is this worth you spending your money on or going back and hunting or what? Because it's the information that I, as a consumer, would want to know myself. I also usually try to explain a little bit about a character or something to, you know, drop a little bit of knowledge, you know, not saying that people didn't already know it. Maybe some people didn't already know it, you know, uh, you'll have crackheads in Canada. Yeah, of course we do. We also have something called skeets and those guys skeets are pretty much going to be best friends with the crackheads. Like they're all, they're all cool. They're all going around the same circles, man. Skeets. You, you'd know one if you saw one. You'd know one if you saw one, you know? I, that's all I could tell you. Uh, it'd be like, see that guy? That guy's a skeet. Um, we're like Wheeljack and Perceptor. Yes, yes, that's a good way of putting it, Keldy. It absolutely is a good way of putting it. Um, okay, let's get into the actual news, shall we? Because we've been in here now a few minutes. We've got a couple of things done, but not a lot. Okay, first things first. DX and I showed their MP um, side swipe. He's going to be 16.70 centimeters in robot mode. He's going to be 15 centimeters alt mode. He has a shoulder cannon, his blaster, um, and he comes with a battle hammer. And he looks very square. It's very weird. I very much want to see what he will um, turn out like with colors. DX9 is back and they're doing MP scaled stuff. But like we already have a number of versions, I'll say, of MP Sideswipe. Of course, the official and like some recolors and stuff of that. It'll be very interesting to see how this pans out and plays out. The car mode looks brilliant. The robot mode, I feel like, I don't know, looks a little too blocky or square. I don't know. I don't know. And it might just be where it's a grayscale thing. I don't have the images here because right now I don't think it's really fair because my criticisms might change once we see color ones. And I'll probably show those then. Um, we also found out about a new line, I'm going to call it this week, with something up and coming called the Swapticons. And I'm assuming that these are ones... You know, with Earthspark now, we have those two packs where, like, you can take part of B and part of Robbie Malto and put them together. Or Mo, I don't know which which child comes with which Transformer. Or you can take, like, Twitch and and the other Malto and, you know, put those together. I feel like the Swapticons, maybe, maybe they're kind of like the Hero Mashers or something. I don't know what this is exactly going to be. But the combinations that we have is Optimus Prime and Ultra Magnus. That's G... 1055. This that's the product code. Um, Megatron and Shockwave. That'll be an interesting mix. That's G1056. Uh Bumblebee and Hot Rod. Hmm. Interesting. That's G1057. Grimlock and Snarl, G1058. Cheetor and Tigatron. That's an interesting one. G1059. Starscream and Thundercracker. G1060. Nemesis Prime and Clench. There's a weird one. G one two three five and Shadow Panther and Ravage G one two three six. I do not know any more than you as to what a swap the con will be. I presume a swap the con will be part swapping, but time will tell. No images or nothing at this time. The last swap the con uh, number I have is G one three four one, and that is going to be a Wild Jungle Mission 5 pack. I don't know if this is G1. I don't know if it's related to Transformers 1. I don't know if it's its own gimmick line. I don't know if it's pulling from all eras. I don't know any more than what I told you. But I'm sure more information will come along the way. Time will tell. Um, United Wave 2 and Selects 5 pack out in the U.S. I've seen the Selects 5 pack. I mean, I was tempted because I'm like, do I want that now? But like, I've said it before, I don't need the other four. I just don't need the other four. I already own the other four. And I keep thinking me getting that is going to deprive somebody else who doesn't have those moles. Now, yes, I suppose I could go through the hassle of trying to sell mine off, but I feel like that's what everyone is going to do with that. So I'd rather leave it for somebody else to enjoy. And if it means that I can't have Hound, then I can't have Hound. And that's really unfortunate. But 
who knows? Maybe I'll luck out, right? You know, I know it was mentioned to me that somebody wanted to, wanted to like send one my way, and I appreciate that. But I mean, I don't hold anybody to anything like that, of course, right? Um, let's see. I had all of my uh, Ed says I've had all my import games and consoles stolen from my apartment back in 2000. That's brutal. That's brutal, man. I uh, had an air conditioner taken out of your window while it was running. No way, man. People have some gall. Uh, if I had my own shuttle, I bought my collection at the house in a room where I enjoy my collection. Fair. Fair. Twitch and Robbie Thrash and Mo. Thank you. I, I know. Yeah, I know that, but I don't know in the uh, two packs. One is Bumblebee and one is Twitch, but I don't remember which human is also packed with who there, which one is Robbie and which one is Mo. Um, but yes, you're right. Yeah, and on the show, it's that's with how they're paired. Uh, I like the G1 and Ryan Pack story because Orion wasn't born into greatness, uh, but he had to earn it. That's fair. That's fair. That's there's a logic to that for sure. Um, I found the swap force stuff interesting, uh, though the clench with Nemesis Prime really piqued my interest because it's clench. Me too. I was like, that's so so weird. I really want to see it. I think Swap to Cons sounds gimmicky too. Will it be success? Will it not be success? I don't know. I'm not usually a gimmick guy, but we'll wait and see. Uh, the five packs wheeljack seems to have problems with the roof tabbing in correctly on the figures. There's a pretty ugly gap. Uh, I feel that um, there's a gap in the windshield that looks really bad on Sunstreaker too with the colored in windows. I think the translucent plastic minimizes those gaps a lot better than the painted blue, but that's just me. Um, all great molds, by the way. All five of those. Great, great molds. I have versions of all five because I have detritus and reviewed it. Really great molds. Um, let's get to sharing this. Um, let's see. Yeah, this. Okay, and Dr. Wu showed their shattered glass, and these guys are between five centimeters. They're tiny, tiny, like MicroMaster size. Shattered glass, sound wave, and blaster. Now, I actually have the shattered glass versions. They're both Voyagers, but man, oh man, this is very, very, very cool. I really, really, really dig it. I don't know if you do, but I really, really do. Um, hey, Grimlock on. Um, I think they look great. Now, here's the kicker with it. You also get, and see if I can show this now. Um, actually, you know what? Here, we'll run through the picture since we're here. Great articulation. You'll notice there's a laser beak there. There's a ravage there. Now you have rumble. You have friends, and you'll notice they're gray and red. That's because you get... My understanding is you get six gray and or six red. Like you probably, I think it's a two pack. And I think one comes with like six gray minions. And the other comes with six red. They don't transform. They're not going to be able to go in the chest or anything. But you should be able to. Um, hold on. You should be able to. If I can find it here. Pardon me. My phone went off there. Um, yeah, like this, see, like you can see, like there's the gray and I just showed you the red. So I think that looks really cool personally. Just one second, guys. Pardon me. Um, like, I think that that looks so cool. I don't know about you guys, but I do think it looks so cool if you're in for something that small, right? Um, Shadow Glass, uh, Sir Soundwave, Soundwave. Uh, yeah, absolutely he is. Absolutely he is. Uh, pretty good looking tape decks. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing. When they turn to the tape decks, they look great. Um, hey, D-Dog. Uh, got that five-pack Sunstreaker's windshield is a bit of a bummer. The color's much better than the last time. No crazy mismatching yellows. And that's fair. Um, I actually used a toy hack set that was sent to me on my Sunstreaker. So I, I always forget about the mismatched yellows. But yeah, good point about the mismatched yellows indeed. Absolutely. Um, hey, Hot Wheels. Fun fact, we went to a collector store last weekend and got a few things. Nice. 
Nice. Uh, so yeah, Dr. Wu, looking great. They're also doing battle damaged versions of those two in their regular colors. Um, that's supposed to be like a nod to their battle in Headmasters. Now, here's the interesting thing, though, about that. The only damage is on their actual tape deck chest, and it's only like a splotch of paint. And I'm like, okay, you're not really damaged anywhere else, but sure, you're battle damaged. Sure, why not? I mean, you can't... You know what? Dr. Wu had to... They had to shoot their shot. You know what I mean? You can't blame them for it. They had to shoot their shot. But yeah, um, I mean... It, we have Rumble, Frenzy, Ravage, Laserbeak, Eject, Rewind, Steel, John, Ramhorn, all covered in that set. I think that's really cool. Very, very, very cool. Um, I can mark off that. Mark off that. Let's go to another third-party company, hey? And let's show if I can find it here now. Let's see here. Um, is it this? Yes, it's this. Look at that. That is Star Toys take on tracks. Now, unlike Sunstreaker, I actually showed this one. It is an MP tracks, but I wanted to show it because. Hey, input. Hey, back then, man, it's been a while since you've been here, buddy. If Hasbro ever decides to step away from making Transformers and licenses out the brand, what third party company would you like to see make them? MMC. Hands down, MMC. Easy. That's an easy, easy answer. Um, I recently found a bot. What? Um, I recently, sorry, bought Studio Series Bumblebee, Sunstreaker, and Gamer Edition side swipe. Right on. I mean, I they're not here. They're not, they're not in Canada yet, or they're not in my area, Canada. Um, but cool. If you found them. You know, why not? And you're into them, why not? I still think the feet on Sideswipe are weird, though. Like, it, it, I don't know. There's something about his lower legs and the feet that's weird. Anyway, I digress. This guy here. So, Star Toys, they're doing a Trax. Um, this follows from their renowned Blitzwing that everybody says is absolute magic. I can't speak to it, really, because I don't, you know, you know me. I'm not an MP guy, right? Um, I know that it, you know, is considered fantastic. Now, this looks very clean. A lot of people did not like the MP tracks. I reviewed the Road Rage, or maybe it was KO of the Road Rage. And it's okay. It's all right. But I also like the Kingdom Kingdom tracks. I didn't like the MP as much as the Kingdom, personally. I look at this, and I think this looks really nice and clean. Really, From his blaster, his wings. I mean, that looks like tracks. You're going to need, you know, maybe something on his chest, but... That looks really, really good from the front, from the side, and even clean the back. That's the other thing. I was like, wonder what kind of a mess the back will be, but it looks super clean. There's this flying car mode, and you see the blaster does go into the front of the grill, as it should. Like, that looks clean again. I don't know how difficult it'll be to do the transformation, but man, oh man, really, really gosh darn impressed, I must say. I really must say. And... We'll do that. Um, if it's MMC, I hope they make affordable figures too and do what Legacy should be. I mean, I heard some good things of the Gamer Edition set swipe. I haven't heard anything because you know me. I don't I don't watch or hear anything until I got something in hand. If I don't get it in hand, then I usually wait until all the hype has gone around it, right? With an MP tracks, I can only it can only improve over what's available. Uh, Trax isn't that important of a character to me uh, to double down. That's fair. Honestly, that's fair too. Uh, I could understand how some people would say, ah, the one I got is fine enough. I totally get that too. Trax looks good. I agree. He does. I don't know what state he lives in now, honestly. Um, do I consider Trax a triple changer? No, I don't. Um, I consider his flight mode more of a feature than a triple changing alt mode. It's more of a feature that he can do. But that's just me. I mean, maybe other people would say, no, 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 he is, right? I love MP, but hate tracks and Road Rage. Uh, could you please repeat the third part? What? Could you please repeat the third party making track? Oh, Star Toys. It's Star Toys that's making him. Uh, the same ones that made that Blitzwing in 2023 that everybody raved over and said it's the best 
MP Blitzwing ever. So they have a reputation for making really good quality. Let's see if the, their tracks will live up to the hype or not, right? Um, speaking of MP, why don't we do this next? Why don't we just do this next and get it done? Uh, where is it? I have to find it. Um, there we go. There we go. So now we have MP60, MPG9. And this actually harkens back to a couple of weeks ago when Gabriel was in here and mentioned about uh, MPG. And I said, ah, oh, not the same thing. However, it seems like they actually will become the same thing. Maybe he's a bit of a fortune teller. MP is going to end with MP60, a toy accurate deco of just Ginrai. Just the, just the robot with the little uh, Power Master. From here on out, apparently everything that would be MP will go under the umbrella of MPG. Why Takara is doing this, I don't know. The um, Super Ginrai is going to be MPG 9. Right now, all the other MPGs have been uh, train bots. So, I don't know. MP, MPG 9, um, Super Ginrai, is, it does include the cab. I thought it was just the trailer. It's not. It does include the cab. It will be a toy accurate version of the cab, but it also has the trailer. A lot of people have been asking, are we going to get a um, God Bomber to go with this to make God Gin right? I don't know. I have no idea. Here's the thing, and I'm going to grab this right now. Some people have said, some people have said, like Master Fire, for example. Some people have said, hey, uh, we really need a new Super Gin Ride because the, um, like, let legends one or um you know the this one that i'm holding my hand um you know has its issues and it does certainly have its issues stock stock this guy has um feet that are wobbly mine aren't because our good buddy input actually made um these like 3d blocks on the back of the feet makes them super stable now um the um, how can I explain this? I guess the cab, the stock cab is just a cab. It's not the smaller Ginrai robot and the smaller Ginrai isn't the power master. It was a headmaster. So I get all the issues with this guy. And while a lot of people would say, no, you know what? I want a proper one. I'm going to get the MPG. Go for it. For me, I got the, um, I think perfect effect kit that gives the little Ginrai robot. I have the perfect effect kit. That is the cab, the separate cab. That's the separate Ginrai with a new head. And then I have the trailer and I have God Gin right here. So I don't need the MPG because I kind of upgrade this guy to the point, much like with um, 86 Ultra Magnus and my Combiner Wars Magnus. My Combiner Wars Magnus fills the need for me. This still fills the need for me and functions really well for me. But I 100% understand if somebody feels like they need to, you know, double dip or replace that one because it doesn't have like all of the proper features i guess it depends on how um committed you are to the um japanese fiction and series but yeah the mp line officially coming to an end with 60 i think they were leaving a lot of cards on the table there mp collectors are probably gonna be quite disappointed with that however it'll be very interesting to see how things evolve with mpg i assume I assume that MPG is still just going to be like MP. I don't think it's going to be some sort of huge monumental change. But time will tell. Time will definitely tell. Um, by the way, the MP60 is going to be 119.17 if you kind of translate uh, the yen to US dollars. And the MPG9 will be 257.23. So there you go. That's that. Um, we are getting, I guess I can close this up now as well. We are getting reissues of the Gamer Edition Optimus Prime. A lot of people missed that. So rejoice. He's got pre-orders and stuff up now getting reissued, as is Earthrise Optimus Prime, which I find very interesting because we had Earthrise Optimus. Then we had him released again without his trailer in the... Um, War for Cybertron Trilogy with darker colors. And I think he had a new head sculpt or something. And then he was released again in um, Kingdom. So it's not like we haven't had him. Uh, we've had him a bunch. And a lot of people are saying, hey, why are they reissuing 
Earth Rise Optimus when we know we have the 86 Optimus coming up. Very interesting move, if you ask me. However, the Earth Rise Optimus is cheaper than the Commander because it's a leader class. So some people might have money be an issue. And honestly, it is still pretty quintessential, especially if you have or you're lucky enough to be able to find or get your hands on the axe roller and the um, um, ion cannon that came in the Centurion pack, right? You you add those kind of features to the trailer, to Optimus, to his matrix, and he's a he's pretty close on perfect. It needs a bit of paint. I put the VNR head on, as we know, right? But like, I understand why it's being reissued because it is very, very good and quite popular. Uh, getting rid of that. Let's go into. Let's go into um, another note from Takara before we move on. So from May 10th to June 3rd, they are going to have um, an exhibit going on in Japan where a lot of Transformers merch will be shown, including Beast Wars keychains, an Optimus Prime t-shirt, um, and it Takara is going to be offering a clear version of this the most recent studio series, Bumblebee. It will be a translucent yellow version with some gray, gray bits. I mean, I don't know. Do I have, do I have a screen of that to show? Um, not that one. Hold on. Yeah, this, this here. That there. I mean, it's just the, the little core class bumblebee, I believe, uh, in translucent colors. If that's your thing, if that's what you're into, then cool, I suppose. Also... Um, Takara is, I think at the same show, going to be showing off their Kara Curry Transforming Optimus Prime. This is a statue that's on a base. I've shown it before. And the statue itself transforms. It doesn't do anything else. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't talk. It doesn't, it's not a, a figure or anything. It's just a statue that apparently is capable of transforming. I haven't seen it transform, but apparently that's what it does. How about we do... A little bit of news next for, hold on, for this. Um, let's see. Uh, not that, not that. Yeah, let's do this next. Transformers 1. So um, we're starting to get some movement and whatnot on this piece of fiction that's been a long, long, long time coming. About time that we start hearing and seeing some stuff about it. This is pretty much the logo. They've teased it. The trailer, the first trailer is supposed to come next Thursday, hopefully before Gotback goes live, so that I can actually discuss my reaction to it with you guys, but time will tell. So next Thursday, we're supposed to get the trailer. We've already seen what seems to be um, like an Optimus Prime popcorn bucket. There were a couple of pictures. They're kind of grainy and whatnot. Um, and some of them seemed like they were showing off like some bucket, but kind of in the background, you could see what looked like an Optimus Prime bucket. A lot of people are presuming that this is Optimus Prime as popcorn bucket form. For Transformers 1, I guess, again, time will tell if that's what it's for, but it sure looks like it could be. Sure looks like it could be, but that's not the only news that we have for Transformers 1. No, 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 no. Transformers 1, we know the trailer is next week. So, at CinemaCon, which is where all this information is coming from, a clip was actually shown, um, a little bit of a brief clip. Here are a few notes that came out of that. It is its own original story, not connected to any other fiction. Um, it starts out with Optimus as Orion and Megatron as D-16. They live and work underground on Cybertron the whole time they're underground. Um and they're not able to transform at this point. They end up coming in contact with and meeting Bumblebee, except he's known as B-127. And the trio of D-16, B-127, and Orion uh, decide that they're going to try and make it to the surface of Cybertron. And they encounter Alita-1, who wants to turn them into the authorities. And there's this like big epic chase. Part of the chase is on a train, on the top of a train in the sky so it's pretty wild apparently cybertron is a hustling bustling you know utopia of activity it's not war torn and battle damage um it's it's a society 
The faces are apparently far more human-like than robotic, so I don't know how that aesthetic is going to go over. They do, of course, eventually learn to transform and what not. Once they get to the surface, um, B-127 tries to convince Alita to come with them because now they're going to go and try and find Sentinel and the Matrix of Leadership. For what reason, I don't know. So it's, it's very interesting because... I think of the book, the movie Ember, when I think of them living underground. And then when they get to the top, now they're going to go and they're going to find Sentinel and they're going to get the Matrix and maybe they'll meet the Lollipop King along the way. And like, I, I feel like, okay, so they get to the top and then they're going to follow the Yellow Brick Road a la Wizard of Oz. That's the two movies, that's the two fictions that come to my mind. A mix between Ember and the Wizard of Oz, if you know either of those. Um Oh, and and not for nothing, but apparently Chris Hemsworth is using an American accent, so you're not getting like Thordimus Prime or something, right? Like it's not his Thor voice; it's just an American accent that he's doing. So, make of that what you will. There is a big rundown of everything to do with Transformers One. I'm excited for it. I'm I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. Now, something else I'm looking forward to, but I know is going to cause controversy. Also coming at a CinemaCon is. The next film that Steven Spielberg is going to be an executive producer on. Already in development, even though we have heard nothing of a director, we have heard nothing of actors, we haven't heard anything about a script, but apparently it's in development, whatever that means, for the Transformers G.I. Joe crossover. A lot of people don't want this. I do, if it's handled right. I didn't mind the previous G.I. Joe movies. I didn't even mind Snake Eyes, uh, even though my wife hated Snake Eyes. Um, I don't know. I get it. A lot of people are feeling very burned by the these live action franchises in the past. I don't think a lot of people have confidence in it. As a Transformers fan, as a G.I. Joe fan, I implore you, please, 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 please give it a chance. Before you judge, before you immediately say, oh, this is going to be garbage, give it a chance, man. That's all I'm asking. Just give give peace a chance, baby. That's all I'm asking. Uh, and I'm going to mention this and then I'm going to check in with you guys. And not for nothing. I don't have the picture here. Ah, I should have found it. But on display right now, I believe, at International Cake Show Australia 2024, there is a three meter tall. Now, just so we're clear, your boy here is apparently like, I'm like 1.86 meters or something like that. A three meter tall. So we're down nine-ish feet. Roughly 10 feet, something like that. Cake of Bumblebee movie, Bumblebee in the robot mode. Previously, I showed you a picture of a cake that was Bumblebee in his Camaro mode. Well, this is him now as a robot. He has a frame and the cake is basically built on the frame. It's edible. So whatever robot limitations there are, they're going to be there because you're dealing with, you know, cake, right? So it is what it is. Let's close that out. Cake. It's cake. It's cake. Uh, let's check in with you guys a little bit. Oh, hold on. I got to take that out. Let's go up here. I know I definitely missed some stuff, guys. And again, if I skip stuff, I do apologize as we go. Um... I think the flight car mode was a gimmick. Um, yeah, I don't feel like tracks changes enough to be a triple changer. Yeah, I'm sort of with you there. Um, flying car is not a jet. That's fair, right? It's like kind of like Cybertron Optimus, a triple changer, because the truck uh, mode can fold the wings out. Yeah, right? I wouldn't call that triple changer either. I would call that a feature, right? Um so who are MPG 7 and 8? Uh, I think 7 and 8 are the two redeco train bots, right? We had MPG 1 through 6 for Raiden, and now there's two of the Raiden guys that have been, like, done in, like... I'm, the only thing I could call it is, like, they're nicotine-stained, right? And I think that's 7 and 8, so this would be 9. It does look really good, but I don't collect MP. That's, fi that's fair to me either, right? Um, Fans Hobby Ginrai is enough for me, and that's fair too. Fans Hobby Ginrai is quite good as well. Uh, I don't collect Masterpiece anymore, but the MP10 was a must want. Uh, I Not for me. Never liked it. 
Best upgrade for that fig. If I assume input, you're talking about those ankle uh, blocks, and I'm not gonna lie, it makes him infinitely more stable. Yes, it's it was such a simple little fix. It's all he needed, but it makes him infinitely more stable. So you know what? You're kind of not wrong. That said, I mean, having both of the other uh, upgrade kits from Perfect Effect, I thought that they were quintessential to give you the cab, to give you the Power Master, and the head, the new head. Um, I really like Reactivate OP. Uh, his transformation reminds me of MP10. Oh, well, then I don't want Reactivate OP because I can't stand the MP10 transformation. I think it's terrible. Oh, yeah, it just makes me not want to want to do it. Thanks, no, I saved money. I have so many Optimuses. I have retired from collecting any more of him. I have one Earthrise. That's the only one. If you look, if you go back, I think it was the summer. Uh, when I did my collection tour in a number of shorts, they're all their shorts. I think it's like 21 shorts or something. You'll see that I don't have doubles on any of my shelves here. My son does. When we cover his part of the collection, you would see that he has a bunch of doubles because he doesn't care. But I don't personally. Uh, I change stuff out. Like, for example, right now I have the Siege Chromia on my shelf. As soon as I get the United, which I'm definitely getting because I hate the Siege Chromia with the passion of 10 million sons. As soon as I get it, that other Chromia, she's out of here. She's gone. Somebody is, like, usually my son takes it. But if not, I'll uh, look at some people, and you know, who do want it. And somehow, some way, we'll work something out, right? I don't know. Maybe maybe this time around, I'll go to Ninja Bill. You know what I mean? Uh, Legend Ginrai isn't for me. I'm sure he'll do another Chug. I'm sure they'll do another Chug scale. Ginrai Power Master Arteries Prime at some point, so I can't. I can wait. If you can wait, then cool. I don't know why the Legends one isn't for you, though. It has, like, everything. But I could see how it wouldn't be if you're thinking to yourself, too. I wouldn't want to go in on the upgrade kits. I understand that. I really do. I really do. I made a custom Ginrai. I thought about doing that before, too, honestly. Um, what was I going to do it with? I actually had a mold in mind that I was going to do it with. I don't remember what it was now. Oh, I was going to do one somehow with the um, Power of the Primes Evolution Optimus. I was going to do it with that. Oh, that's nice water. But I didn't need to. Hey, Maximal 10. The MP looks good. I uh, hope it'll live up to the hype. And I'll tell you this. If the MP is 257 US, uh, even when you do the conversion, considering everything that's in there, from the Power Master to the bot to the bigger bot and the trailer base and all of the parts that come with it, like, I'm not surprised it's that price. I'm really not. Actually, I thought it was going to be after the idiotic price that optimus prime was mp44 i thought that this was going to be a lot worse but it's not it's way better um hey mike i hate thieves uh i don't know how many times i let so-called friends in my home for stuff to go missing right right that's a lot cheaper than i expected exactly what i was saying frenzies not a bad price yeah i'm right there with you guys um Reissue is because Hasbro is lazy. Maybe. I, I I don't know if it's so much lazy. I wouldn't say it's lazy. I would say it's terrible distribution. Either way, I think reissuing some of these is honestly a good idea. Legacy United ER Optimus is such a weird release. I agree. You need to cut this, this show short. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I'll... I'll, I'll I will shortly. Um, guys, I'm going to end up having to cut it short. Uh, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to like finish here with you guys. And, um, and uh, I guess then I'll just, you know what? I'm not going to do the comments. I'm going to, um, let's just do this. Trivia real quick. And then I'm going to show the, uh, what do you call it? We're going to get out of here. So trivia real quick. Speaking of Ginrai, what Japanese prefecture is he from? Is he from A, Nagata, B, uh, Shizuoka? Uh, C, Gunman, uh, or D, uh, Nagano. A, B, C, or D. What do you guys say? What do you guys say? Yeah, D, Nagano. It is Nagano. And the, uh, um, hold on, let me, let me do this. And the uh, um, unboxing. Um, sorry, guys, I'm having to cut it short, but I say la vie. Sometimes real life comes up. The unboxing real quick. Tomorrow's review will be not one, but two of these rhinoxes. 
That's going to be tomorrow, the regular Rise of the Beast one and the Little Battle Master. And last but not least, next Tuesday, this is going to be interesting, Scout Class Storm Surge. Is he Cybertron? Because he has a Cyber Planet King. Or is he movie? We'll talk about that next week. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, though we rushed the end here just a little bit, I got to get out of here. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through spring. Or of course, hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. Don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you right there, all of you right there, you do make a difference in the world. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way right here inside the videos.